veteran of the Navy and 26 years as a public school teacher, John Nelson knows the Grand Traverse Bay better than most people. He's just completed 13 years as the Grand Traverse Bay Keeper, working to preserve the water quality of the bay and its tributaries through advocacy and education. As he prepared to retire from his post with the Watershed Center, John spent a few minutes with us discussing the Baykeeper program and the challenges presented by a changing climate. The Waterkeeper Alliance began with the Hudson River Keeper program, where some fishermen, commercial and recreational fishermen, joined Bobby Kennedy Jr. as an attorney, and they decided that they were going to clean up the Hudson River. At the time, from Hyde Park to the ocean, the Coast Guard actually classified it as an industrial sewer, the Hudson River, it was pretty gross. So they, they started taking um, legal action under the Clean Water Act and under other statutes that were on the books and began to sue industrial polluters and won. From this beginning, the International Waterkeeper Alliance was formed. Today, the Alliance has hundreds of members, including the Watershed Center of the Grand Traverse Bay. So we have a protocol that we use before we'd ever sue anybody. First, you go to the, the person or the entity that's affecting clean water and see if you can work with these people, which we have done. Then you, if, they, if that isn't successful, then you go to the jurisdictional entity, whether it be the township, the city, the county, DEQ, DNR, whatever it is, and see if they could take action. If that doesn't work, then bottom line is you would go to court. We've never had to do that, and hopefully that we never will. In our area, we don't have a lot of point source polluters. Our issues are more non-point issues, development, runoff from, from the road, streets, uh, stormwater, that, those kind of issues. Every keeper's required to have some kind of vessel on the water. We had two kayaks at the time in 2002. We launched our tugboat in 2004, so during those two years we didn't have a powered boat on the bay, uh, which didn't really matter. A lot of what I did at the time from 2000, well, actually until today, is oversee or look at and write letters of critique on uh, various permits, whether it be filling wetlands or dredging the bay or um, working on your shoreline. An example of that would be the Lowe's project, for instance, where Lowe's store is. And they, to get to their store, had to go across a wetland that's adjacent to Kids Creek, one of the tributaries of Kids Creek. And they were going to fill in three to four acres of wetlands to basically do a standard fill culvert kind of a driveway into their store. So I, I read the permit and decided to critique that and comment on it and ask for a public hearing because I thought there were alternative, prudent and feasible alternatives that they had. As a result of that letter, Lowe's pulled their permit and came back with another alternative. And if you go in there now, it's basically a bridge. They basically bridged that wetland and affected maybe a, a third of an acre of wetlands instead of three to four acres of wetland. So that's just an example of something that we do. In 2004, we launched our tugboat, the Bay Monitor. We do a, a, quite a bit of research on that, but we also build it as an iconic boat. And we have a little sail that says Grand Traverse Baykeeper Watershed Center. So a lot of it is, a, is an icon for clean water as well. With climate change, that's kind of the joker in the deck, if you will, on how that's affecting those natural cycles. I think what we can say is there, there is change. One of the changes that I've noticed is when people say we have, we're, we're planning for 100-year storms, those 100-year storms now are 10-year storms. So we have increased intensity of storms with in, intense rainfall or intense snowfall. And that is a real uh, concern for us. If you strip the land of its vegetation to develop without really good development techniques to control the runoff, we're going to have runoff into our watershed and eventually into the bay. What we're focused on and I'm focused on and the Watershed Center is focused on is resiliency and being just as careful as we can as we develop because we're, we live in a very, very special, beautiful place. Mm -hmm.